It's finally time to talk about Kitchener Essences. It seemed like a lot of you enjoyed my first Kibbe video where I tried to figure out my own Kibbe body type. And today I'm taking a stab at breaking down the Kitchener essences. We'll talk about the common traits and patterns that we see for each of the essences in terms of specific facial features, proportions, visual weight, and contrast level. If you know anything about the Kitchener essences, you'll also know that it's a very vibe and ambience focused approach, which is quite different from my usual content. And if you're anything like me, where you like things explained in a very logical and analytical matter, I think that you'll find my interpretation of the essences to be interesting in the least. So make sure to stay tuned till the end to see for yourself if this video can provide you with a fresh perspective. All right, so I know a few weeks ago I talked about releasing a Q&A video this week for my one year anniversary on YouTube, but I felt like a lot of you showed really keen interest for the Kitchener video, so I thought I would just get this one out to you first. I mean, talking about myself can wait for another week, so. Okay, so Kitchener essences. I honestly found Kitchener to be much more complicated than Kibbe. I mean, complicated is not the right word. I would say just more difficult for my type of brain to process. With Kibbe, concepts like width, curve, and vertical are specifically related to the lines of your body. Whereas with Kitchener, a lot of the descriptions are based on feelings. So translating those feelings into some sort of a more tangible logic in my head was quite the challenge. And then on top of that, you can also be a mix of essences and more often than not, you are some sort of a mix than a pure type. So it's just a lot to process. But there are definitely some common traits and patterns that are prevalent across the different essences. So instead of going through the seven essences one by one, I'm going to talk about some of the facial features that I think might have the biggest influence in determining your essence. A quick disclaimer here that these are my interpretations and opinions and by no means am I trying to set new rules in typing your essence. Even with a lot of these points that I will be bringing up throughout the video, there always seems to be some degree of exceptions. So keep an open mind. All right, so the first feature I wanna talk about is eyebrows. The reason why I wanna start with eyebrows is because as I've mentioned in my previous series on eyebrows, they have such a big impact on determining the overall impression of the face. You know, some people say that 80% of a person's first impression can be dictated by the eyebrows. I mean, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but there are so many examples out there that can prove just how much your eyebrows can influence your overall look. And the style essences are all about how you're perceived and it's based on a balance between your yin and yang energies, which can also be interpreted as a balance between how sharp, bold, or intense you come across versus how soft and delicate you appear. And since your eyebrows can make or break your look, I think they can be a very significant factor that can help with understanding your style essence. For example, dramatics are supposed to be the boldest and the most intense because they're on the most yang side of the spectrum. And if we look at the eyebrow shapes on faces with a very strong dramatic essence, the eyebrows are sharp, harshly upward sloped, and very angular. The color or the boldness of the eyebrows can also have a big impact. Again, going back to the same examples of faces with a strong dramatic essence, their brows are highly contrasted and quite bold, whereas a common trait of the ethereal essence is their low contrast level and especially a very light color in the brows. For ethereals, the lighter color in the brows really gives them that hyper soft and otherworldly look. I mean, of course, along with other factors as well, but because the different components of your eyebrows, like the angle, the color, the curvature, and the overall shape, all play a crucial role in determining the overall impression of your face, these factors can also play a big part in determining your essence. Some of you have mentioned in the comments in my previous videos that you see a bit of an ethereal essence in my face, and I don't necessarily see it for myself, to be honest, but I do enjoy wearing a lighter color in my eyebrows because of the overall softness that that lighter color brings and I wondered if that has anything to do with you associating my face with the ethereal essence. Anyways, going back to talking about the different essences and their eyebrows, even with the gamine and ingenue essences, oftentimes they're compared as each other's counterparts across the yin and yang spectrum because they have some similarities. And gamines are known to have this sort of a mischievous look about them as opposed to the ingenues that are better known for their innocent appearance. And I think that eyebrows is one of the more significant factors that differentiates that playful versus innocent energy. 
Now, here's where my opinions about eyebrows and their relationship to essences might contradict where the different essences fall within the yin and yang spectrum. I think with the essences that lean more on the extreme ends, this relationship between eyebrows and intensity or boldness are in alignment with how the essences are placed within the spectrum of yin and yang. But with the romantic and natural essences, if we're just looking at eyebrows, I do think that naturals have a softer look to their eyebrows than romantics. And that's because naturals are known to be more approachable and relaxed, whereas romantics are supposed to carry a level of sensuality to them, which can sometimes be expressed through features like smoldering eyes or some level of intensity in their eyes. And since eyebrows are the closest feature to the eyes and they have the ability to frame your eyes, there is definitely a relationship in the intensity level between your eyes and the brows, which is why I think romantics could have more yang brows, so to speak. But holistically speaking, I think that naturals make up for more of the yang elements through the bluntness in their facial structure, like a strong and wide jawline or a bit of width in their nose bridge. And on the other hand, romantics have more of the soft or yin elements through features like a softer jawline and plump lips. I think that plump and luscious lips are a very definitive trait for those with the romantic essence because full lips are such a sensual feature and they're one of the most pronounced yin traits that are so obviously round and soft and delicate. So I'm not just trying to focus on one feature like eyebrows to categorize the essences, it should still be a holistic approach, but just from what we know about how much influence eyebrows can have on your overall impression, I think it could be a major indicator that can steer you into a certain direction when it comes to essences. Okay, so what are some other features that could be significant indicators of different essences? I think that the overall facial length can be a factor of consideration because like I talked about in my previous video about age and shorter hair, facial length can have an influence on how mature or youthful you appear. The length of the face is not the only factor that determines how old you look, but I think that more often than not, faces that are short tend to appear more youthful. And if we look at essences that are supposed to appear youthful, we have gamine and ingenue, and essences that have a more mature feel to them are dramatics and naturals. Now, I know that ethereals are also often associated with long faces, and they're described as ageless because they have that mystical and otherworldly quality, but I don't think that they appear particularly young or youthful like the way gamines and ingenues do. Now, the reason why I think this is an important indicator is because for essences like ingenue and gamine, appearing youthful is such a big quality that describes the essences. I mean, ingenues literally used to be called youthful and gamines are also known to appear playful, high-spirited, and have a childlike quality to them. And while having a short face is not the only quality that'll make you look young, like I said, more often than not, short faces just have a tendency to appear youthful because shorter faces resemble the proportions of a baby's or a child's face. And our brains do make that association and connection. So if essences are about how you're perceived, then having a short face should be a big indicator that you likely have a significant level of ingenue or gamine essence in your face. If you have a long face, on the other hand, the angularity of your facial bone structure can be a more significant indicator. Prominence in the facial bone structure can be seen in all of dramatic, natural, and ethereal, but angularity is more significant for dramatics and sometimes even for the ethereal essence rather than for the natural essence. It's interesting that dramatic and ethereal essences can both have angularity in their facial bone structure, given that they're on the opposite ends of the yin and yang spectrum, but again, it's more so other elements like the overall coloring or the shape of the eyebrows that influences the holistic appearance of these essences. So I guess that just proves the point that the system is really not a straightforward or a linear concept. However, this made me wonder about the importance of contrast level and the visual weight of your features in determining your essence. If we look at Kate Blanchett, for example, she's the prime example of an ethereal essence that has an angular bone structure, and the ethereal in her is especially obvious with her natural lower contrast coloring. With a higher contrast level, I don't think it's as obvious, but I would also say that her facial features have lower visual weight that doesn't really allow for an intimidating or a very striking vibe that dramatics tend to have. So I definitely think that there is a relationship in your overall contrast level and the visual weight of your facial features that play a role in determining your essence as well. 
Now, with naturals, the prominence in the bone structure is shown not through the angularity, but more so with the width and bluntness like I talked about earlier. And I think the width really gives the naturals a certain level of weight and sturdiness about their faces. And it's almost like a sense of stability, which I think is why naturals can appear very relaxed, but also mature and confident. I feel like I definitely have the natural essence. Like I said, I'm not so sure about ethereal, but natural essence, I definitely resonate with. Maybe it's because I think I'm a flamboyant natural in Kibi that my opinion of myself is biased, but I do have width and sturdiness in my facial bone structure. My bones are by no means angular in any way, but the prominence and the weight of my bone structure is there. Now, romantics I did talk about a little bit in terms of lips and eyes or eyebrows. And in terms of bone structure, I don't really see much prominence or angularity in their facial bones. And same thing with ingenue. I don't think that prominence in the facial structure is a trait for ingenues. And for gamines, I think they can have more prominence in the bone structure. But like I said, that childlike quality for gamines can often be associated with a short face and proportions that are similar to a child's face. And children have a shorter lower third compared to their top third. So I think even with a bit of prominence in your bone structure, like the jawline, the prominence is just not as significant for gamines as it is for some of the other essences. Again, this is just a general connection that I'm making, so there could be exceptions. Now, classics, I really didn't touch on at all with any of the features I've talked about so far. And for those of you that have the classic essence, I'm not trying to exclude you or downplay your essence in any way, so don't be offended. I mean, I think that I might also have a little bit of the classic essence in me as well. But so far, I focused on talking about the more specific nuances or patterns that really jumped out at me across the different essences. And classics are supposed to be the most balanced, which is why I think these points that I've brought up didn't really apply to the classic essence. But in my opinion, for that specific reason, classics have this admirable quality to them. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but what I mean is balance and specifically balance of the two extremes is a very fine and intricate state. It's an equilibrium that most of us don't have, which is why I think classics are often associated with words like poise, grace, and dignity. And that's what I mean by having an admirable quality. I mean, if you've watched my previous content on proportional analysis, I talk a lot about finding a balance and the classic essence already has that balance. So I guess that's why I had the least to say about the essence in today's video. But that's not to say that the classic essence is less important. You guys just have less to accommodate in general, in my opinion. Whew. I had such a hard time scripting this video and talking about all these points today. For me, Kitchener essences are still a little too... But I hope that what I've brought up today has at least provided you with some different perspective on the whole system of essences and some food for thought. My personal preference is taking a more analytical approach, to be honest, but I do agree that the inherent image and the impression of your face does have a huge influence on your overall personal style. So as I create more deep dive videos into each of the essences in the future, I'll continue to make these connections that can bridge that gap between some of the more vague concepts and a more tangible approach. I'll see you in my next video. And until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous.